Hey guys, it's Luke Yon, and today I am going to be filming my May wrap-up. I read like 16 books in May or something. I read quite a lot. It's a lot of books. I, it's the most books that I've read in a month this year so far, so that is very cool. Um, if you're wondering why I'm sitting on the floor, that's a good question because I don't even know. But I don't know if I filmed in front of these shelves since I like updated them, but I have like my classics on this shelf, and then I have arcs here and some um, like middle grade children's books here and then I do have my TBR shelf here but it's like basically empty because I'm the worst at like thinking to put books on there but whatever that's not the point. I read a lot of books in May and this video I feel like is already gonna be super long and also I'm sorry if the lighting sucks because it's very cloudy but when I open this shade it looks like Jesus is just like raining his light upon us so it looks really weird but hopefully you can forgive me. Anyway, let's just get into the video. This is already such a mess. Oh my god. So the first book that I read in May was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is her next book, her most recent book. It came out on June 1st, um, and I got an e-arc of it, and I read it in like a day. It was so addictive. Addicting, whatever that adjective is. But, um, yeah, so basically this book follows, um, the, like, children, the four famous children of Mick Riva, who was one of Evelyn Hugo's husbands in Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and they basically, it's like these four famous siblings, and every single year the oldest sibling, Nina, throws a party at her house in Malibu, and, um, so basically the book is split up into, like, the day, like, the couple of hours before the party, and then it switches into, like, the past with McReba and, like, Nina, like, Nina and her siblings' parents, um, and then the second half of the book is, like, hour by hour what happens at the party, and basically you know from the beginning that at the party, like, the house ends up burning down, um, and you don't know why, and he kind of just, like, goes through the motions, and I am giving this book five out of five stars. I really, really love Taylor Jenkins' reads books. Um, I've read quite a few of them. I can't remember how many because I can't remember how many she has written, but I read quite a few of them and I really enjoy most of the books that I've read from her. And this is definitely one of my favorites. Um, it didn't top Evelyn Hugo, but it's still really, really good. And it's like the perfect summer read. I might really read it during the summer because it's just like the perfect summer read. It's like definitely a good beach read because it takes place in Malibu and it's just very beachy. Some of the um, siblings are like surfers, and so that's really cool. And they all have like kind of their own thing. Like some of them are surfers, one is a photographer. Like it's all just this kind of fun thing, and it's like a family drama. And it's just really, really good and addicting. It's like close to 400 pages, but again, I read it in a day. It was so just like I just was like it was it was so good. <laughs> so like please, please read it if you have a chance. And. I haven't listened to the audiobook because I read it before it came out, but um, maybe the audiobook could be interesting. I feel like this could be a good audiobook, so maybe look into that. I don't know, but I would definitely, definitely recommend this book. The next four books that I read were the Ember in the Ashes series by Subba Tahir. So I reread the first three books, An Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, and A Reaper at the Gates in preparation to read the final book, which is The Sky Beyond the Storm. Um, I read the first three books last year around May. Um, so you can, like, watch that wrap-up if you want to know, like, my thoughts. Um, but I really, really love them. I give all of them 5 out of 5 stars. Torch, I would probably give, like, a 4.75, not a 5. Um, it's easily, like, my personal least favorite in the series, but I still really love them all. And, um, A Sky Beyond the Storm, I really, really loved. I gave that one 5 out of 5 stars as well. I thought it was, like, a perfect conclusion. Um, it was, like, it was just so weird. I loved how it wrapped things up. It wrapped things up that I didn't even think I needed wrapped up, but it was so good, and I really, really loved it, and, um, I loved, like, how Subbit here kind of, like, wove in the different perspectives, and I loved getting more insight on, like, the villain character, and, um, this was, like, the most fantasy of all the books, and I really, really enjoyed that aspect of the story, and if you have not picked up this series, what are you doing? It's so good, and it is just, like, it's one of my favorite Y fantasy series, so you definitely should pick it up if you have a chance. After that, I was still kind of, like, in that world, that headspace, so I read A Thief Among the Trees by Subba Tahir and some other author. Um, this is a graphic novel that is, like, a prequel to the Emperor in the Ashes series, 
and it follows Helene and Elias and some other kid <laughs> um, while I go like on this kind of quest journey thing that um, Black Cliff Academy like sent them on and it was good. I ended up giving it three stars. It was fine. It was kind of just like a quick graphic novel to get through. Um, if you're like a mega fan of the series, I probably would recommend this, but it's not like anything special. And I could tell that it wasn't Sava Tahir who wrote it. Like, she, I think she came up with the idea, but someone else wrote the script, and I felt like it was very obvious that that happened. And I think that there are supposed to be more graphic novels, and I will read them, like, if they come out, but um, I haven't heard much about that, so I guess we shall see. But I still, I, I enjoyed it, I thought it was fun, and I would recommend reading it if you're, like, a huge fan of the series, but otherwise I don't think it's, like, required reading or anything. Then I read Sea Prayer by Holly Hosseny. This is, like, a picture book that, um, it's, like, a story that was written um, because of the story of a boy who I think washed up dead on the shore of Turkey, I think it was. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. But this is kind of just a story that was, like, in response to that. And it was really beautiful. I don't think I gave it a rating. Did I give it a rating? I don't know. I had my Goodreads right up here. No, I didn't give it a rating because it was, like, very short and I felt like I just didn't really, like, I didn't really know what to rate it. I thought the art was really beautiful, the writing was really beautiful. The story was, like, honestly so haunting and it, like, it did stick with me and I still think about it from time to time. So I would definitely, it's very short, like, you can literally read it, like, at the bookstore if you want. Um, I, I read it on Scribd, so I think it's still on Scribd, but, um, it's just really, I think it's something that, like, everyone should read, um, and everyone can read. It's super accessible, and it's really easy to read, and you can read it in, like, a couple of minutes. I think it's just, it's a really good story, and I would definitely recommend you pick it up. Oh, also, I forgot to mention <laughs> that in May I participated in the Asian Readathon, which is hosted by Cindy from Read with Cindy. And so all of the books that I read in May were by Asian authors or featured, like, Asian protagonists. The next book that I read was Marriage of a Thousand Lies by S.J. Sindhu. This follows a woman named Lucky who is Sri Lankan and she ended up going into, like, I can't remember if it was an arranged marriage or if she just married a guy named Krishna, but she and Krishna are both gay and they just married each other out of convenience. Um, to please their Sri Lankan families who wouldn't accept them for who they really were. And basically this book, it doesn't really follow that marriage specifically, but it follows like basically Lucky's grandmother has fallen ill and she ends up going back home and she meets her kind of childhood high school sweetheart um, named Nisha and they kind of end up getting involved again and Lucky kind of grapples with her sexuality and wondering if she should tell her mother or not. And I really, really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. I would definitely recommend the audiobook. I thought it was a really good listen and it was a really quick read. Um, I really enjoyed the writing of this book. I think Astrid Sindhu was like a really, really talented writer and I really liked her descriptions. And I thought the characters were really well fleshed out. Lucky in particular was just like a really, really well written character. She felt very real. Um, and also the other characters I think were also really dynamic and interesting. I do wish that we got a little bit more from Lucky's husband, Krishna. I thought it would have been really interesting to see his point of view on everything. Um, and almost like, even just like a few chapters here and there from his perspective that would have like, I think, shed more light on Lucky and then the rest of the story, and I think it would have rounded out the story to make it like stronger just in general. Um, this was like the first of like my literary fiction kind of been. I really enjoyed, like, this book and it kind of set me on a spree of reading more uh, literary fiction, but I was really nervous going into this because I hadn't read much um, previous to this and so I was a little bit weary going in, but I ended up really enjoying it. Um, I was nervous that, like, the plot wouldn't keep me engaged, but it actually really did and I feel like if you like Taylor Jenkins' read, this book really reminded me of um, her novels. So I really enjoyed this and I thought it was a good, fun read. After that, um, I got approved for another e-arc of Blue Skin Gods by S.J. Sindhu. Um, I read this, um, like, you know, early, I think. When does it come out? I don't know. Let me look at my Goodreads. It comes out November 2nd. Um, 
And this book follows a boy named Kalki who lives in an ashram in India with his parents and he has blue skin and they think that he is the reincarnation of the Hindu god from the Hindu mythology, Vishnu. And basically it kind of just follows his life as he deals with these things and I don't really know how to explain it. It's literary fiction, there's not like a big overarching plot, but that's basically all you need to know. Oh wait, actually I forgot. There, are, He basically ends up going through like three trials once he turns 10 years old to prove that he has the power of Vishnu and that he really is like a reincarnated version of that god. So this book is split up into four sections and I really really enjoyed the first three um, when Kalki is kind of like dealing with his life and these trials and everything. I thought it was really really interesting and I liked that aspect of the story and just kind of like going through the motions. It felt a lot like magical realism. It was very fantastical and I really liked the whimsicality of it all. I was honestly ready to give this book like 4 or 4.5 stars. I was reading it simultaneously with Marriage of a Thousand Lies and I was liking it even more than that book and it was just like I was having a really fun time. But <laughs> the fourth and final section of this book just like ruined it. Like, if I were to give the first three sections of this book, like, four or 4.5 stars, I would give, like, the last section, like, 1.5 or 2. It just completely, like, erased all the things that I liked about the, like, first part of this book, um, because it was just, like, I don't even know how to explain it without spoilers, but basically it gives an explanation as to why our main character is like this, why he has the blue skin, what if he really is um, the reincarnated version of Vishnu, and I hated it. Like, I hated the explanation. I thought it was so, like, cheap, and I just really didn't like it, um, and I don't know. It just felt like he, it felt like a different character. Like, it felt like I was reading a different person, and I didn't like how different it was, because the first three sections take place, like, while Kalki is with his family, um, and then the last section it takes place in New York, and there was just a complete tonal shift that I really was not a fan of. It takes place in, like, modern-day New York, and it was, like, this band stuff, and I just, I did not like it. I was not a fan. It was, like, so hard to get through. It was just, I didn't understand. I felt like S. S. J. Sandu had written the first three sections of the book, and then hired some other writer to finish the book because she didn't want to. Like, it just felt so weird, and I didn't understand it, and, like, I, it kind of like tainted my experience of reading this book because that was like the last section. Um, and so I ended up giving the book like a 3 out of 5 stars because I did really like the beginning but the ending just like ruined it for me. So that was really really upsetting and I wish it had been a little bit different but what you gonna do? After that I read Exit West by Mohsin Hamid. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm not sure if I did. But this book is basically, it takes place in like this fictional war-torn country, or I don't know if it's fictional or if it just, it wasn't stated which country this takes place in. Um, and basically there are these doors that keep appearing that will like take you to other places. Um, and it's kind of magical and our main characters are Nai Na wait, Nadia? Oh my god, I'm forgetting her name. I'm like literally the worst at this. Yeah, I was right, okay, Nadia and Saeed. And they basically end up going through these doors and Again, it's a literary fiction novel, not like a ton happens, but it kind of just follows them as they deal with life and kind of begin to fall in love with each other and go through these doors. It's been a while since I've read this, can you tell? So I originally gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars, but I think like in retrospect after having thought about it, I'd probably give it like a 3 or 3.5 because I still really enjoyed it and I liked the message of it, but it just hasn't really stuck with me. I think the writing was like probably the best part of the book. I really loved the writing. I thought it was so lyrical and I really enjoyed it. It felt like poetry and I liked the characters as well. I thought they were interesting to follow. I liked following their perspectives and um, the world was interesting. I liked how it was kind of built and I liked the magical sort of fantastical aspects of it. I would recommend it if you're looking for just like a quick literary fiction book that kind of mirrors the, you know, imperfections of our world. Um, but other than that, it just hasn't really stuck with me. And I feel like it should have. Um, and maybe I'm just not <laughs> like able to really like comprehend the message well enough. But I don't know, I guess just like 
it's weird because I really really enjoyed it when I finished it but like since I just I feel like it's been like time and I kind of have been able to think about it and I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I did initially which is interesting but you know like I wouldn't steer you away from reading it like I still enjoy it I still give it like a 3 or 3.5 um but just like after having thought about it it's not like as amazing as I originally thought. Then um, I read Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I really really enjoy Christina Lauren's books. They are an author like writing duo and this book follows Josh and Hazel and Hazel is a elementary school teacher. She's very eccentric and deems herself not dateable. She's very weird and she had in college this very awkward encounter with a guy named Josh and basically in present day she ends up running into him again and they end up kind of like setting each other up on these dates and the dates end up failing and then they kind of try to figure out if they actually like each other instead. So I really enjoyed this. Um, it's probably my second favorite Christina Gordon book. Um, the Unhoneymooners is still my favorite. I don't think anything will top it but I really, really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really quick and fun to read. I really liked the characters. I was kind of nervous because I heard Hazel being compared to Jess from New Girl, and I've seen a few episodes of New Girl, and I hate Jess. I think she's so annoying. But Hazel is not like that. I think she's very endearing and interesting to read about. And um, I think she and Josh have a lot of chemistry. And I liked getting to hear from both of their perspectives. And I really liked um, kind of how they interacted with each other. And then how they set each other up on those like horrible dates was just like really, really funny to me. I think that there was like some weird plot thing at the end where like, I didn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but you know, it surprised me. So I guess that's like a good thing. I don't know. But I wasn't huge, the biggest fan of it. Um, so that but that was like a very small thing i still ended up giving it like a 4 or 4.25 out of 5 stars i would actually probably reread it um i thought it was a really cute romance book and um i think if you like christina lauren you will definitely enjoy this book as well next i read the prince and the dressmaker by jen wang this is another graphic novel that follows um a guy named prince sebastian who ends up finding out that there is this dressmaker who makes these elaborate dresses named Frances and he basically employs her and he's like hey you know sometimes I'm really happy being Prince Sebastian and wearing my princely clothing but sometimes I just want to wear dresses and be Lady Cristalia so will you make the dresses for me and she says she's like weary at first and apprehensive but she ends up saying yes and this kind of just follows that. There's uh, some conflict going on because it's a historical fiction book and he is the crown prince and it's kind of just this whole thing. And it was really cute. I really enjoyed it. I read it very quickly and it was really fun to read and um, I really liked how it kind of normalized like uh, Sebastian's lifestyle and I thought it was like it's a really good message for kids and it told it in a very simple straightforward way and I think it was really really enjoyable and fun and I I didn't like how like the conflict ended up coming in at the end so I ended up giving it like a 3.5 out of 5 stars because I liked in the beginning when he and Francis were kind of just like going around the country and like doing all these things and she was making dresses for him um but then when the conflict started coming in I was kind of like can we just go back to like them bantering and like doing fun things so other than that it was still really enjoyable and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for like a cute graphic novel that you can read in like an hour then I read Once More Upon a Time by Roshni Chakshi this is a novella and um I enjoyed this book um I gave it like a three stars it was fine um, I ended up listening to the audiobook, um, because it is, like, an audiobook only. It's, like, an audible special sort of thing. And I hated the male narrator so much. This is basically, like, a retelling of the Seven Dancing Princesses or something. I could totally be making that up, but whatever. Um, and it's kind of, like, what happens after the happily ever after, basically. Um, and... So there's like a female narrator and a male narrator and the male narrator made me want to rip out my hair. He was so bad. He literally like, he made every single person, every single like woman, actually not even women. He made like literally every single person besides the like character from the POV he was reading sound so nasally and annoying that he made me want to stop reading the book. It was so, it was, 
it was so bad and I hated it and it made me so angry like other than that it was like a fine book and I it was like it was okay it's like was nothing special it was like a random novella but it that definitely deterred <laughs> me from enjoying this book wholeheartedly it was so frustrating and it's not like I just like could read like a regular physical book it was just like I kind of had to listen to the audiobook because that was it's like an it's not in a print form so I had to suffer through that narrator and it was very frustrating and annoying but yeah I do know that the print like the actual hardcover is coming out in October so I would say wait for that so that you don't have to endure what I had to endure with that audiobook then I read the sun is also a star by Nicola Yoon this follows a girl named Natasha whose family is going to be deported and she is tr kind of trying to figure out what she can do they have 24 hours she's trying to figure out what she can do to help her family from getting deported um, and herself as well and she's kind of going throughout New York City trying to find someone that will help her and she ends up running into a boy named Daniel who um, kind of like convinces her that he will be able to make her fall in love with him in a day and they kind of go off on these different like adventures and stuff and end up opening up to each other and maybe they fall in love maybe they don't I'm not gonna tell you so this book takes place like over 24 hours in New York City and it's just like a really fun book to read that had like some serious undertones that I really enjoyed and I liked how it dealt with like immigration and deportation and just like being like from a different country or having like you know how you deal with like your heritage and culture and stuff um, but something that I really really liked about this book is that it does have the first person perspectives of Natasha and Daniel but there are also like interstitial chapters from people that they encounter like this bus driver that they saw or some cashier at a store that they went to or you know what have you and I really like that I feel like it added dimension to the story because it's kind of like how it showed like it made it made the story more well-rounded. I think it showed like how your life doesn't just impact you, it impacts the people that you encounter with and meet and stuff like that. And so I really enjoyed that and it's kind of like the perspective of the universe I guess. So it's like you got to see like the bigger side of this Natasha and Daniel's kind of like day in New York. So I really enjoyed this book. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. It was really cute and fun but it was also kind of serious and I really like that and I have yet to watch the movie but if you have watched the movie and you liked it and you also liked the book I would like to know because I don't want to like watch a terrible adaptation because the adaptation of Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon was atrocious and very difficult to sit through so if this is similar please let me know because I do not want to have to deal with that um, and then the last two books that I read in May were both rereads the first one was Imagine Me by Talha Mafi. this is the sixth book in the Shatter Me series I'm not really going to talk about this book because I have a full like review video of it on my channel so I'm just going to link that in the description box so that you can watch that if you want to see my full spoilery thoughts but I gave it five stars that's all you need to know and then the last book that I read in May was A Very Large Pits of Sea by Taha Mafi. This is, again, another reread. I think this is, like, the fourth time I've read this book or something. It's, like, one of my favorite books of all time, and I really like reading it at this time of year. I don't know why, I just always end up doing so. Um, and I also do have a full video, like, about this book and stuff that I can also link. And I've talked about it, like, a bunch of times on my channel, but I gave that five stars as well. But that is it for this very long wrap-up. I didn't know that it would take this long, but it's fine. Um, but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. All my social media links are in the description box below if you want to look at those. Um, and yeah, I'd like to know what books you guys read in May. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!